YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Obi back with another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button because today we got a crazy video for y'all boys. So today we got a subscriber requested video and I know a lot of people have been asking me to do another gun collection video because my gun's been all over the place. I've been getting them, getting rid of stuff. So y'all wanted me to do another gun collection video because honestly, I feel like my gun collection, especially this year, that got really crazy, really out of hand. So y'all boys stay tuned. We finna get into showing y'all some guns, showing y'all what we got this year. And yeah, hopefully everybody's having a good 2023. But right now we're gonna go into my 2023 gun collection. Let's get it. My team winning. Hold it. My phone ringing. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Now, before we hop into this, I know a lot of people's gonna notice, especially the vets to the channel is gonna notice a lot of things missing because I don't have everything with me right now. But we do got it. You know, we got a really nice collection right now. So y'all gonna see some crazy pieces and the giveaways. The giveaways all 2023 is going crazy. So y'all know my giveaways from 2021 to 2022 really elevated. Now I need to tell y'all because I know a lot of people missed out. I need to tell y'all, y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button right now. Hit that subscribe button because my giveaways all 2023 is going crazy. Oh, but what I want y'all to do before the video starts is down in the comments, I want y'all to type your best gun in your collection and we'll see how many people, other people like it and what other people think about it. So right now, Get in the comments, type in your favorite gun in your collection. Let's see what people think about it. Now, with that being said, we're really trying to start 2023 off with a bang. So it's none other than to start off with my Barrett M82A1. Now, this is the 20 inch barrel. So we got to go ahead and get this big baby out the way. This is chambered in 50 BMG. Now, this thing right here, this was like a bucket list gun. Like, honestly, like this was a bucket list gun. Like, I feel like if you are into firearms, you gotta shoot this at least once. Like this thing is a whole crazy experience. The concussion that you get from this is just ridiculous. And it is clear, everything on the channel was safety checked. This does come with, I think this is either a five round magazine or an eight round magazine, something like that. But it is chambered at 50 pm. You just look at how big that magazine is. So if y'all ever have an opportunity or if y'all ever see me at the range, just know, if I had this on me, you're more than welcome to take some shots. I mean, come on now. If you're into firearms, you gotta shoot a 50 BMG at least once in your life. So we gotta start it off with a bang. So first thing up, a 50 BMG Barrett. Now let's go on to the next one. Next, we're gonna start off a little rare. Those who's new to the channel, you're gonna notice a lot of super rare things in my collection because I don't only like practical guns, I like all different types of guns. You're gonna see really crappy guns you're gonna see really high-end guns you're gonna see really rare guns my main thing that i like is super rare guns so guns that you really can't find anymore guns that you really can't get no matter how much money you got i mean money does play a role but no matter how much money you got you can't get them because they're out of production so that being said i'm gonna introduce you to my arsenal firearms 2011 now i know y'all are gonna say like i've never seen that 2011 before like let me go ahead and show y'all the mag show y'all how different this is the best to the channel already know about this so yeah you see two mags that's conjoined together by that base plate 245 acp and what makes this really special is that right there yes sir you got a double barrel double barrel double trigger i don't know if you guys can see that trigger but it has two triggers one on both sides but the pull of one of the triggers will put into action both of them so all you have to do is put pull one trigger and it releases because the hammer is basically welded together so the hammer is this same hammer which one big hammer is going to hit two and then pans and it's going to set off two rounds of 45 acp at the same time now this one if you find it if you find it on the market people are going to be asking an arm and a leg for this one this one is crazy now originally i did want the chrome the chrome one but that one is super hard to find and the person that i did find they wanted like 10 stacks for it so it's it's it, it it definitely get crazy but the prices is only going the value is only going up on this one so that's why i had to have this in the collection my arsenal firearms double barrel 1911 well 2011 whatever you want to call it double barrel 45 acp let's go on to the next one okay so next we got two of the coolest looking backpack guns i think in my collection i think these ones look they just look so different they're automatically recognizable they just look cold and you can probably tell by the brace mr gq smooth is in the building and that is my q honey badger magazine is clear nothing in there let's go ahead and check so yeah but there's nothing in there man super smooth 
but this is a Q Honey Badger Chambered in 300 Blackout with that Geisley Trigger. Check out that Geisley Trigger. Like, look at the take up on that. That's the take up. And watch this break. Oh my God. This is, man, like, I, this has been on my list for a minute, but people, they're just asking crazy numbers for these guns, especially the ones that's, that's not really, you know, super popular. You don't go into every store and see a honey badger sitting on the wall because this, the finish of this is just crazy. I forgot the process that they do to make it come out like this. Like, I think it's like some type of acid or whatever, but it is a nice color. I really like it. And the brace, even the way the brace comes out, I think this is a proprietary brace strictly made for Q. So the way the brace came out, comes out is you push that button, pull that out, and you're ready to go. Oh, this is a super small package, and that's why I like it, super lightweight, and it shoots that 300 blackout. So you know we gotta add that trash panda, but that trash panda comes with a weight, so that's what we're doing right now. But introduce y'all to the Q Honey Badger, chambered in 300 blackout. Now I did say there were two crazy looking backpack guns, AR types, that I really wanted to show y'all. So let's go on to the next one. Now the next one we got is a maximum defense, um, what is this, MDX? chambered in 762 by 39 so you know i had to have it maximum defense chambered in 762 by 39 the brace is kind of similar um the way it deploys but i feel like this brace i like the way this brace looks a little bit but i like the way the honey badger feels so the honey badger has a way better feeling brace but this one is super cool and this one is chambered in 762 by 39 that's an ak round and usually with ars AK rounds in ARs really don't function well, but this one actually functions really well. Like I really like this firearm. I might do something about this right here, but I mean, it's all good. I really like the radiant charging handle that it has super wide. So you can definitely get a good purchase on that. You know, I have to go with the whole grips. You just really like this platform right here. If you talking backpack gun, cannot go wrong with a maximum defense. And I think they make this in 300 blackout, they make it in 556 and 762. Sure, they might make another caliber. If they make another caliber, drop it in the comments right now. But yeah, that's my maximum defense. Chamber to 762 by 39. Okay, so now I showed y'all something practical. Now let me show y'all something rare. Now this one, I've never seen this, at least on nobody's collection that is on YouTube. What I have here, as you see, so the vets to the channel already know. As soon as I open the case, you already know what's coming out of it. So what I have here, is the original commemorative Uzi chambered in nine millimeter. Let me go ahead and show y'all. That is clear, nothing in the mag, nothing in there, safe direction. Wow. Now this thing, I'm sorry, you gotta, you gotta really see this in person to really understand how crazy this thing looks. Now I think there was only 600 of these made and it was to commemorate, commemorate the armed forces, I think it was Kennedy that his like secret service or whatever, they was toting these and they trench coats. They would, this is what they had. Like, that's crazy. I mean, they, I don't think they had the one with the wood stock. They had the one with the metal stock that was kind of folding or whatever, but I feel like the wood stock just adds, oh man, it just makes it look even better. Y'all tell me not. Now this is something you're not going to find in somebody's collection unless they are super high end collector collected super rare items because this was ducked off like the way i got this was it's a it's a super long story you have to go watch my unboxing of this to really understand like what hoops i had to jump through to get this thing because you're not going to find it every day i go to so many gun shows and i have never seen one of these before so that's why i had to have it a uzi chambered in nine millimeter this is an imi so i know y'all a lot of people know iwi so before there was iwi there was IMI, and this is number 515. Man, this thing's crazy. Uzi, chambered in nine millimeter. Now, one last look for that Uzi chambered in nine millimeter. And let's go on to the next one. Next, we got a little AR-15 action. As you see, we coming in crazy. I told y'all my collection is different. It's definitely different. I buy what I like, and that's why y'all see the one-on-one -on -one everywhere, because I buy what I like. I don't get influenced by other people, and I do listen to other people's opinions, but mainly, if I don't like it, I'm not copping it. So, introduce y'all to my Gilboa chambered in 556223. This is a double barrel AR 15. The mags are clear. It does have two triggers, it has two barrels, it has two bolts. So, they work. It's like two AR 15s just stuck together. They work completely independent of each other. So, you could all day long go with that left one. You could all day long go with that right one. It really don't matter. Now, this. 
this is a super rare platform so i know when they came out with this i had to have this thing because you could push unlike the arsenal 2011 once you pull one trigger on this one only one is going off and you have to pull the other one and that other barrel's going on so you could have different rounds you could have uh green tips in one full metal jackets in the other you could have whatever you want two to three and one five five six it, it really don't matter so this is chambered in 556 slash 223, and it is a Gilboa double barrel AR-15. Now, if you want to see this in action, go to my videos. Go to my videos because I can't really explain it to y'all unless y'all see it. So go to my videos and watch it because all the guns right here are safe. No ammo, no, no nothing. So Gilboa chambered in 556, 223, double barrel AR-15. Now y'all know this had to be on the collection. These next two, they kind of complement each other. They kind of go hand in hand. Now, if you watch my channel, the staple of my channel is this next piece right here. So, you know, I mean, let me just hop into it. Let me quit talking. What we got, we got a 500 Magnum, two inch barrel. Let me go ahead and show y'all that this thing is clear. Nothing in them cylinders. This does have a five round cylinder, but it's a revolver chambered in 500 Magnum with a two inch barrel. This is the ES um, version, so it's emergency series. So this thing is super rare. And if you find one, they're gonna be acting an arm and a leg for it. So, but the price I paid for this, nothing close to that. So this is the official wrist breaker. Oh! <laughs> this is kind of the staple of the, you know, of the channel. So, you know, I had to get a little company. So that's why I tell y'all to hit them shows, hit them shows, because without that, never would have found me another one boom <laughs> you never know another 500 magnum two inch chambered in 500 magnum the only difference is this one is not ported this one is ported so this one is going to kind of keep the muzzle down a little bit i don't know who's really going to try to keep that muzzle down up a 500 out of a two inch but it is what it is to everybody it's, it's going to be different purposes for me this is strictly a fun collection piece this is i mean you have to experience this unless you're really scared like if you're scared then i mean it's all good but for me everybody has to experience this let me go ahead and just open this so y'all that this one is clear now the one that y'all see people shooting on the channel a lot is this one so i don't really a lot of people haven't really shot this one i think i am the only one i think might there might have been one person one other person who shot this one but that's really it but this one Oh yeah, this took a lot of risk. Smith Wesson 500, chambered in 500 Magnum. And you know we only letting go 700 grain bullets through this. So that's what makes it worse. Only 700 grain bullets through both of these. Now I think there are a couple other people who might have a 500 Magnum that does do YouTube, maybe two other channels or something like that. But nobody has two of them. Nobody has two two inches. As soon as this video hit 10,000 likes, you know I gotta bust both of them at the same time. It's gonna be on the channel. It's gonna have two 700 grain bullets in it. This is the official wrist breaker. I mean, nobody's really doing that. So, 10,000 likes, I'm gonna do it for y'all boys. 500 Magnum, Smith & Wesson, Chamber in 500 Magnum. Let's go on. Keeping that same energy, we got another 50 cal coming to the screen. We This is my Desert Eagle chambered in 50 AE, other, otherwise known as 50 Action Express. And kind of why I say this is keeping that same theme, because you know the Zobie channel, so we have to go crazy. Now, in this case, if you see it twice, you, I mean, there might be a little something going on. Like, Obi doesn't need two 50 cows, I mean, 50 Desert Eagles. I mean, they do look dope, especially going with the 500 Magnum. But, I mean, y'all stay tuned. Y'all stay tuned. That's why I hit, tell y'all, hit that subscribe button. Because these, I mean, for the Desert Eagle, like I told y'all, these are both chambered in 50 AE. I feel like you have to have a 50 AE Desert Eagle. Now, you can go out and get the 44 Magnum, the 357, because those are pretty dope firearms. But... When you see Desert Eagle, you automatically think 50 AE. Like, so you have to have at least the 150 AE, and then you can go to the 44 and the 357 and 429 and stuff like that. But two Desert Eagles, let me go ahead and show y'all that this one is clear. That one is clear. Now these, like, they go crazy. Maybe I should let both of these go at the same time, like off a set it off or something like that. So y'all let me know. Fire, not fire. These are in case color hardened, in case I didn't tell y'all, the hardest finish that Desert Eagle makes. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, the, 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 the gold one, the gold tiger stripe. No, I still think this is taking the cake with that one. The walnut grips, the golden eagle, the golden trigger, the case color hardened. Like, come on. Like, this, it go crazy. So, Desert Eagle chambered in 50 AE. We're going crazy. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so next, we got the head honcho, the Charles Daly triple threat chambered in 12 gauge. 
this is a shotgun and this is technically considered a shotgun this is not a you know a aow or anything that you have to take, have a tax stamp got the correct length of the barrel and i got the correct overall length so this is considered a shotgun and has three barrels a triple barrel shotgun that's why they call it the triple threat head honcho so what you do it has one trigger unlike the other ones that i have so and i know a lot of people's gonna kind of notice that they yes we do have a lot of firearms that have a lot of different barrels so i mean that's what you're gonna see i told y'all my collection is really crazy so back to this how you how you load it put three rounds in there close it up and you get three trigger pulls so the first one's gonna fire i think the top and then it goes down to the left and the other side and then that's it you have to open it back up reload it but it's a super fun shotgun to have now if you've seen my videos i don't know why they put this on here i don't know what you're supposed to put maybe you're supposed to put a flashlight or something try to put one of those you know grips on there and it completely destroyed that grip <laughs> there's no tame in this this is 12 gauge there's no tame in this you just let it do its thing but this is a charles daily this is also a really hard gun to find like you're not gonna find this in your everyday store and i know a lot of people probably haven't seen this but this looks like some crazy stuff off ghost rider or something like this looks like a crazy shotgun so this is my charles daily triple threat Chamber in 12 gauge, let's go on. Okay, so now we're gonna do something a little different. You know, we're gonna take you to practical guns and then completely guns that's completely not practical at all, like super hood rat guns, but they're collection pieces and they're stuff that you've probably seen in movies and stuff like that. So we're gonna start it off. This one is a super collection piece. Like this one is a Uzi, a micro Uzi that is chambered in 45 ACP. Now you don't see Uzis every day chambered in 45 ACP. And this is when IWI was IMI. So it's a super rare gun. If you know about Uzis, you know, most of them say, well, the Uzi Pro obviously is gonna say IWI. This one says IMI, that stands for Israel Military Industries. You're really not gonna find this one every day, but let me go ahead and show you that this is clear because everything was safety checked with that magazine. It's really in there. So clear, nothing in it. Safe direction. Oh, that, that um, grip safety is super heavy. But this is a lug, but it's a soft shooter because this is all still frame, all still slide. This is a heavy hitter. This is definitely a heavy hitter. A super nice collection piece. Like this one, when I found this, I had to have it. This is like a little phase in my life little phase of my life but this is a definitely dope collection piece so if you watch any old school gangster movies or whatever you definitely see them toting one of these i mean whoever had one of these was definitely the bad guy in the movie no question like check it out i am i uzi chambered in 45 acp so now we went over at now we got to go to something a little bit more accurate coming in at that accuracy level we got the cz tso chambered in nine millimeter with that flat trigger like that trigger it's like a one pound trigger it's like a one point something pound trigger now this is probably one of the most accurate guns at least that i shoot like this thing oh my gosh like i i cannot tell you like if you watch the channel you understand my love with this with them lock grips them official like them things are man these lock grips i, I love these like honestly i love the way this gun feels in my hand it's just perfect that lock grip magwell on it and this thing is just just listen to that super soft shooting as you see the slide is low it does have a super low bore access so it does come into your forearm a little bit more so you're not gonna have as much rise it does have a gas pedal on the side so you can hold really hold it down and make sure that muzzle doesn't rise but this thing i like it on the only thing that i wouldn't that i probably need to change that i don't like about it is the fiber optic as you see that thing is super dull you really can't pick it up all said and all done like this thing is a monster one more time check out that trigger so this is the take up that's the take up and then <sighs> tell me like this is everybody who shoots this is the exact same reaction if they haven't shot it before as soon as they shoot it mouth immediately drops so that's that cz tso chambered in nine millimeter now let's go back to the hood rat side now back with that hood rat side we are coming at you with that official tech nine now this is one this is original bad guy gun like this is original bad guy gun and does have the barrel extension on there so let me go ahead and show you how it really looks in the movie now y'all can probably recognize it now this is the official 
this is what they um, dubbed the official Jamomatic. Let me go ahead and show you that it is clear. Nothing in there. It does have a safety, by the way. So this is the safety right here. Push that in, you can't cock it back. Trigger, you can't actuate it. Pull it out, everything's good to go. So let's go ahead and put that big in. Now, this is the official Tech9, AKA the Gemomatic. Now this is the, this was made by Intertech. The only difference is this is one of the original. So this one says Tech9 actually in the frame of it. I think after a while they switched it to like DC9 or something like that. DC9, they took off the, the Tech9 name. I mean, the Tech9 is the original. So you can't get it if it doesn't say Tech9 because it's, it's technically not a Tech9 no more. But this is Tech 9, chambered in nine millimeter. I mean, I can't really say too much about this, but I did take this out and kind of torture tested it. I had maybe one jam and I was with somebody else shooting it and I don't know what they was doing, but as soon as I got it in my hand, I didn't have any jams with this. So I don't know, maybe when I shoot it, it doesn't jam and everybody else, but I had a good experience with it. I mean, it was a soft shooting gun. The trigger is horrible, like it's an awful trigger, but that's not what it's for. It's not a precision shooter. Obviously, you could tell by the, you know, the front sights and the rear sights. This is just, I don't know why they made this. Honestly, I really don't know what the purpose was of making this, but yeah, the original Tech 9. Now, going back to the accuracy level, well, going back to the practical, we got my Staccato XC. Staccato XC, as you see, it does have the comp on the front. Let me go ahead and show you that this thing is clear. As you see, that slide moves back with no effort at all, man. That thing is crazy. So you would think this would have a lot of snap because that recoil spring is light. I don't know how they do it, but you're not gonna feel anything with shooting this. This thing is gonna stay flat like it crazy. The only thing I don't like about this is I don't like the polymer grip. I don't like the polymer grip. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure some people like it, but for me, I don't like the polymer grip. So it is what it is, but it's a super flat shooting gun. And the trigger, I wish it was a flat face trigger, but I think those are really the only two complaints I have about this thing. This thing is, this thing's running. Like honestly, this thing is a runner, but let me go ahead and show you how the trigger. I think this is like a two pound trigger or something like that. That's the take up. That's the break. So it's a little bit heavier than my CZ, but it's still really light compared to majority guns that people's gonna shoot. So that is it, the Staccato XC, AKA Mr. Air Rack. That's what everybody loves to do when they get a Staccato. They gotta air rack it for some reason. But I mean, it's cool to look at. Staccato XC. Now let's go back to the hood rat side. Now, coming back to the hood rat side, we got the original. I showed y'all the Tech 9, I showed y'all the Uzi. Now I gotta show y'all the Mac Dime. This is the MAC-10 chambered in 45 ATP. You're not gonna see this. This thing chambered in 45, you're not gonna see this. This thing shoots so soft because this is 130 pounds. Damn! It's made out of the toughest metal. I think it's made out of tank metal, honestly. Like this thing is super heavy, like super heavy, super bulky, and that makes it, I don't know, that makes it shoot super soft, I guess. The only thing I don't like, well, that's the magazine. It is clear, nothing in there. So the only deal with safe farm. The only thing I don't like about this is my hand. I guess it's too big for the grip. And every time, whenever I squeeze this, it releases that safety. Releases that safety and it drops the mag. So I don't know who was using this, if they had some little itty bitty hands, because if my hands was like that, I'll be able to, to use it. So I cut off that finger, then I'm able to use this. But if I use it with this, magazine's in. As soon as I grip it, the magazine comes out. So, I mean, it is what it is, but this is a tank of a gun. I had to add this to the collection when I seen this. And I got a crazy story about this, but you gotta go watch that video, cause I'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible, giving y'all a brief rundown of all the firearms. So this is a Mac Don shooting that 45 ACP heavy gun. And if you don't really wanna shoot this, you can really use this as a hammer. Now, after showing y'all that, I gotta show y'all a little something with a little bit better accuracy. And that's, I'm gonna introduce y'all to my Walter Q5 Match. Let's go ahead and show y'all that this thing is clear. Now, this thing feels like it's on ice skates. Now, it doesn't feel staccato good or it doesn't feel CZ TSO good, but this thing is, you know, on its own level. And that's what I was talking about with the visibility of the CZ. Let me go ahead and show y'all. So y'all check out the front sight on that one versus the Walter. You see that CZ is very dense, so I do need to change that out. Gives the CZ a little bit better advantage, but that Walter is a different monster. The only thing I don't like about the Walter is I don't like this trigger. I cannot stand this trigger. I don't know why they wouldn't put a flat face trigger in it. I don't, I, I don't understand. Like, I feel like that would have completely completed this platform. Now, I know I have some like collection ones 
that have the flat face trigger in it, but they should have put it in this one. So this is the Walter Q5 match. This is the steel frame. Cause I know they make a polymer frame and actually the polymer frame one is the one that I shot first. And I just love the way that one shot. So I, you know, I mean, obviously the steel frame is going to have a little less recoil. I don't plan on carrying it. So it doesn't really matter how heavy it is, but this one, yeah, this one is definitely it. This one shoots super flat. It's, it's not, it doesn't shoot super flat compared to the staccato, but it shoots super flat compared to what, you know, what it is and stuff like that. So that's it. My Walter Q5 match steel frame. All they got to do is get rid of that trigger. Now I might, I might do something about that, but Q5 match, definitely a good gun. Stay tuned with this one. Now we're going to show you one more hood rat gun. That's not, I mean, you can't really call this a hood rat gun, but it was structured after the original hood rat gun. So it was structured after the Uzi. So this is the Uzi Pro. So they did try to make this one look a little bit more tactical. They put a rail up top, you know, rail in front for the light. They put an arm brace on it so you can, you know, kind of really get active after it. But I mean, it shoots nine millimeter. I mean, it's a decent looking gun. I don't like how they just switched everything, the whole entire lower to polymer. They say, they said that it was for saving weight. But I'm like, nobody's still carrying this. And how heavy can it be? Because compared to the other one, so compared to this one with a steel frame to this one, which is a polymer frame, the weight difference is not that much. So I'm thinking that it was mainly to save money instead of saving weight. So, I mean, it is what it is. They have the reason for doing whatever they did, but this gun, I mean, it runs flawlessly. So I don't have any issue with, you know, the functionality of it, but I mean, it is what it is. The difference between the two is this one does have a side charging handle and this one's the handle, the charging handles up top. So this one's shooting a 45, this one's shooting a nine millimeter. It's IWI, whereas this one is IMI. So same company, just different, you know, they just changed their name or whatever. So this one does have, like I told you, it does have a side fold embrace, does have the rail, rail at the bottom. The trigger is horrendous, just like you would expect. And does have a grip safety. Trigger's horrible. So, I mean, if they really wanted it to be tactical, they could have made the trigger a little bit better, but I don't know. They they did something with it. I mean, it's something to look at. I feel like it's a good collection piece because it's definitely going to catch your attention. IWI, Uzi Pro, chambered in 9mm. Not much to say about this one, so let's go on to the next. Now, since that one wasn't too hood radish, so we have another firearm down. This is the Springfield Prodigy, chambered in 9mm. Now, a lot of people was having issues with this, but if you watch my video, I shot this upside down, I shot this sideways, I mag dump it, shot accurately, no issues with this at all. Like this thing, I mean, now it's not staccato smooth. Well, maybe you could compare it, you're not gonna compare this to the XC. I'm sorry, like the people who's comparing it to the XC, you're, you're, you're on something else. But you can compare it to maybe the C2 or maybe the P, maybe, but you're not comparing this to the XC. Now this thing, the barrel on this thing is super thick. <laughs> Look at how thick that barrel is. It's just shoot nine millimeter. So I have nothing but good things to say about this because I've never had any issue with it at all. I actually like the grip of this firearm better than I like the staccato. The staccato, I think it has a thinner grip. I think that's what I don't like about it. But if you're comparing the way it shoots, staccato is gonna wipe the tail. It's gonna wipe the floor with this. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna wipe the floor with this. Obviously, the the craftsmanship, the attention to detail on the staccato is gonna be way better than this. But don't compare it to the staccato. Put this in its own league, and you you enjoy it. So if any, I know a lot of people was asking me what I recommend the Prodigy. Definitely, definitely, especially for the price point. Definitely recommend the Prodigy. Now let's hop back and let's go on to a little something different. This next one, I know a couple of people is gonna throw up a little bit when they see this next one. This is an ugly gun. This is definitely an ugly gun. But when I went to the show, it caught my eye, so I had to have it. I mean, it's it's different. This is my Ruger, what, 1022? Chambered in 22 long rifle. This is, I don't, I don't know. Don't ask me, cause I don't know. Like this is a crazy looking gun and it is a double barrel. How you fire this one, I mean, it does have the triggers up here, but how you fire this one is like some old, ancient, um, you get, basically got to hold the trigger back and crank this, and it'll rotate the trigger. Bah, 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 bah. As, fi as fast as you can crank this, that's as fast as in 22 is going to come out. So, I mean, it's different. It's different. Right here, it has a stand. I know a lot of people are going to be like, that's a lot for it to fire 22. And you know what? I would agree with you, but it looks crazy. Like, it looks different. And that's what caught my eye. Like I told y'all, my collection consists of 
crazy stuff. It consists of practical stuff. It consists of collectible stuff, all kinds of crazy things. So there's not too much I can tell y'all about this because I really don't know a whole lot about it. I have fired it. It does, it fires. I mean, it's fun to shoot. And I mean, if you like people who shoot, I mean, if you like to shoot 22s or if you have like kids or something, they would love shooting this because the ones that's at the range was going crazy, going crazy with this. So, and it, 22 is super cheap to shoot. So, I mean, this is probably, probably some of the most fun you're gonna have with a 22 because it does have a stand too. I can just lower that. It does have a stand that comes out, put it on the table. And then you can adjust it so you can turn it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So it is a super fun planking gun. But yeah, Ruger 1022 chambered in 22 log rifle. Okay, so I did lie. I did have one more hood rack gun, but this is, I don't really consider this a hood rack gun. This is a classic. Let's just call this one a classic because this is a M11 chambered in nine millimeter. Let's go ahead and show you that this one is clear. And this was a little different. So this one, the trigger on this thing, let me go ahead and show y'all. Nothing in here. Oof, that was hard to pull back. Nothing in there. Wow. So the the what I wanted to show y'all is the trigger on this is not that bad. It's definitely not as bad as those ones. And there's a reason for it. And let me go ahead and show y'all the take up. Oh, it's really none there. And this is stock. This is how it comes. So that's it. And then fire. So this, for what it is. It's a really good trigger for what it is. So like this is one out of 200 made. Nevada edition, this is number 112. So this is a collection piece. And when I seen this at a show, y'all watch that video, y'all see what I got this for. And I mean, you can't beat it. Never fired before, come on now. Like you, you go to those shows because you see a lot of people who are collectors and just never shoot it. They just like to look at it. So when I seen it, I had to have it. So this is a Cobra M11 chambered in nine millimeter. And it's a collectible piece. I and mean, it's a collection piece. So you're not gonna see this in everybody's collection. You probably might see the regular M11. You might, you probably might see some different brands or something like that, but you're not going to see this one unless they're one of the 200. So I had to have it. So we got this one and we actually got another collection. I mean, another hood rat gun, but I don't know. Don't ask me why about this next one because I, I don't know what to tell you. This one. This one from the same seller, from the same dealer, is my M11 carbine. Now, surprisingly, I'm telling y'all, y'all not gonna believe me, but I'm telling y'all, if y'all shoot this thing, you, you, you're you gonna like to shoot it. It shoots super soft and it's really accurate. I took this out a hundred yards using these iron sights, easy. So, I mean, it looks atrocious. Now, don't get me wrong. It definitely looks atrocious. Like somebody made this in their backyard or something, but it is a good shooting gun. So this is definitely a don't judge the book by its cover because I know people's gonna be like, it's ugly, but it's definitely gonna catch your eye. And it definitely caught mine when I seen it at the show. Now this thing is long, it's a carbine, but it's, it's different. And as you see with the collection that I showed y'all so far, it goes with the collection. A little bit of here, a little bit of there. M11 carbine made by Cobra and you just don't see these. I've seen those before. Now, some of them are a little bit rare with the finishes and stuff like that, but I've never seen something like this. Like this is a madman's gun right here. So M11 carbine and I know this is gonna be too much for y'all. So let me show y'all a little something a little bit more accurate to kind of calm y'all stomach down a little bit. Now, I know a lot of people is gonna recognize this one because I mean, it's a super recognizable gun, especially with the little mini one they just came out with. This is my FN SCAR 20 NR, non-reciprocating charging handle. <laughs> I don't know the abbreviations, but non-reciprocating charging handle. And which means that basically this charging handle right here, it does not go back when you shoot it. Cause I know a lot of people, they was getting their hands cut. They like to, you know, have their hands somewhere up here and stuff like that. And if you have the charging handle going back and forth, it, you know, it's bound to come back and bite you. Also having a non-reciprocating charging handle is going to, you know, keep your shots a little bit better because you don't have the charging handle going back and forth. So your follow-up shots are gonna be a little bit better with that one. But yeah, don't ask me why I haven't shot this one. I kind of, as you see, it does got webs on it. Never took it out before. I don't know why. Um, yeah, it kind of just got lost in the back of the save. So, SCAR 20, chambered in 308. I don't really know too much to tell you about this one. Everybody kind of knows about the scar. But yeah, I had to show you all a little bit something, a little bit more accurate because I mean those M11s, yeah, they kind of they kind of upset your stomach a little bit. So 
Scar. Oh, let me go ahead and show you the trigger. I think this was the one with the Geisley trigger. Yep, this is a Geisley trigger. Let me go ahead and show you that trigger. Let me show you that this thing is clear. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Safe direction. Now let's show y'all this trigger. So that's it. That's the take up. Wow. So this is a super nice. This is a super nice gun. Like I really like this gun. I don't know why I haven't shot it. Because I, you know what? I you can't just take this to no regular one 200 yard range. You really got to push this out the distance. That's probably why I haven't shot it yet. Because I haven't really found a range. That's going to, well, I think I might have found one. So I met some guys at the gun range, but that's a whole different video. But let's go ahead and go on to the next one before this video gets too long. SCAR 20, non-reciprocating charging handle, non-reciprocating charging handle, chambered in 308. Okay, so now this one, this one is a super special one to me because this one was a subscriber kind of reference. This one, like he kind of recommended this one to me. So he went to his local gun shop and found the JJ rolls box i've never heard of this before i didn't even think this was a thing honestly but he knew my style by seeing my collection see my videos and he was just like hey ob day got limited numbers of this so this was a limited edition for those people who watched terminator you know in terminator 2 when he was walking in that like janitor's hallway or whatever And he had the rose box in his hand and he dropped the rose box and picked this thing out. Judgment Day Anniversary Shotgun Lever Action. Like, come on, like, like that go crazy. And it comes with actual roses in it. Well, they're not real, but you know, you know, you know what the thing is. But this one is number 50 out of 300. There's only 300 of these. So I don't have a lot of lever actions, but a lever action 12 gauge shotgun. Like, come on, like this thing is crazy. Like, I think I shot this once, but then it's more like a collection plate. But I know a lot of people is gonna try to turn it. I don't think you can really turn it with this one because the this part is not rounded. So, I mean, if you try to turn this, I, I did, I'm not gonna lie, I did try to turn this. I did, did try to spin this when obviously it was empty, but it hurts. Especially with my hands like it, it, this thing hurts like this is not meant for that but i mean it's a really good shotgun it's really smooth runs like a dream and it's like a subscriber like kind of requested this one for me like well he kind of recommended this one for me so that's what makes it kind of dope so yeah j day anniversary chambered at 12 gauge this one's probably not going to go anywhere rose box limited edition like i told y'all my collection is going to be filled with a lot of different items and this is just one of them lever action 12 gauge now while i was looking for my next gun i did notice that there was a couple other rare pieces that i am missing so y'all let me know in the comments if y'all want me to do a part two and we're definitely gonna get that job because there's a couple other things i want to show you that's not with me so yeah let me know in the comments if you want me to do a part two notice that i didn't show you guys any AKs. So let's go ahead and show you that that's clear nothing in here safe direction wow this is my SAM 7, not my SAM 7, my SAM 7 SF, chambered in 762 by 39, made by Arsenal out of Bulgaria. This, hands down, my favorite AK rifle, period. I don't care what anybody says, my favorite AK rifle. Now, don't get me wrong, that's the Stava, that's the Stava M70, top of the line, top of the line, but ugh, that's a hard one. Let me not get into that in this video, because that's going to take all day, but... This is my SAM 7 SS. This is the enhanced model, so it does have the enhanced trigger in it. Let me go ahead and show you for an AK. And this is how it comes from factory. But let me go ahead and show you. That's the take up. Really good for AK. Really good for AK. This is probably one of my favorite AKs, like I told y'all. SAM 7 SF, chambered in 7.62 by 39. And next, we got that SAM 7K, what I've been saying. This is clear. Nothing in the gun, safe direction. As you see, this has a traditional AK trigger, and it does have a side folding brace, because this is a brace, you see the straps or whatever. So, this does have a side folding brace. This is out of Bulgaria also. This is the pistol version of what I just showed you. This does come with the flashlight. All of this stuff came from factory. So the flashlight is like a handguard that's kind of integrated in that. I think I need to replace the battery on that because that light is super dim. But yeah, it does have the flash hider on it. 
I really like this AK. This doesn't shoot like an AK. So if you watch my video of when I reviewed it and when I took it out to other people to shoot it, everybody says the same thing. It does not shoot, feel like an AK. It does not shoot super soft. So this probably is my favorite AK pistol, hands down. So I know a lot of people are gonna have a lot to say about that, but it is what it is. You can't say it unless you tried it. Sam 7K, chambered in 7.62 by 39. Now let's go a little bit smaller. Now, if we go smaller, you know we have to go to that Sentry Arms Micro Draco, chambered in 7.62 by 39. Now this is just, this is just a toy. Honestly, like this is just a collection piece. It's just a toy. It's I don't know. It's fun to shoot. It's it's accurate. It's 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 accurate. Like I can I can hit off like a hundred yards. If you take your time, you could definitely get a hundred yards. I would ping it with this at I think it was like 30 yards, 40 yards. So I mean, if you practice with it, you can be accurate with anything. Now, this is this the first thing I'm gonna grab? No. So this is Century Arms Draco. I mean, everybody recognizes it. Like, I mean, you show it, everybody recognizes it. All this is it is what it is with the Draco. I, I mean, I, I like the Draco. This is probably gonna stay in my collection, at least one of them. So, not too much to say about it. Sentry Arms Micro Draco, probably one of the smallest platforms of the AK-47 that you can really get. So, the prices of these are skyrocketing, like they're after crazy amounts. I mean, I think they're starting to come down a little bit, honestly. I think they're starting to come down. The quality control, they need to amp it up with the Sentry Arms, but all in all, it's a decent piece. I haven't had no issues with this one. Um, I did have an issue with the rear sight coming off, but other than that, function wise, I haven't had any issues. So, Sentry Arms Micro Draco. This next one, I don't even really want to put it in the AK category, but I have to. I mean, I have it, so I mean, it is what it is. This is a Heiser, Heiser, I don't know how to say it. Um, and what's crazy is the person whose name this is is American, so I don't know why he's walking around with that name, but. That's it. It's a 7.62 by 39 pistol, like an actual pistol chambered in 7.62 by 39. It's a single shot, nothing in there. This does have a 15 pound trigger and this is the only gun that will play Russian roulette with itself. So what I mean by that is you're gonna get how many ever pulls, it's never consistent. So this is not gonna go off on the first pull. It's not gonna go off. You're gonna have to pull it again pull it again it might do the third one it might do the fifth one it might do the seventh one so that's what i'm saying it's like playing russian roulette you just got to stand there and just let it happen until it goes off and surprisingly it's not a lot of recoil like you would think shooting a 7.62 out of something like this is going to recoil like crazy but it's it's not it, the recoil is super minimal now it's loud because it does have those ports at the top and you are shooting at you know what is this like two inches or something like that you are shooting a 7.62 by 39 out of something this small. So it is gonna be loud, but the recoil surprisingly is just non-existent in this thing. But, and it doesn't, even though it's an all steel frame and it's just, they just built this to just be bad, you know, just to, just to be a horrible gun. Like that's what this feels like it was built for because it's not ergonomic. This thing is super wide, but it's thin. So it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know whose grip whose hand they built this around. But it is what it is. Trigger guard is atrocious. Like everything is just bad about this gun. It's so bad, it kind of interests me. And they make this in like 300 blackout, 762 by 39, 556, 223, um, and I think like nine millimeter or something like that. So it's a crazy round. It's definitely a collection piece, but it's a horrible gun. If you're trying to shoot it, it's a horrible gun. But I mean, it is what it is. Oh, and also after I shoot this, you have to have a hammer and a screwdriver handy. Cause I don't know if you guys can see it, but this thing is scratched up because I have to have a flathead, a flathead or a screwdriver or something to really knock that thing out because this thing seizes up. And I tried brass ammo, steel case, every type of ammo that uh, 762 takes. I tried it out of this thing and the same reaction from all of them. So yeah, not too much to say about this one. This is a trash gun. So let's go on to the next one. Now, next we have this bad boy right here. This is the SMG. LWRC 45, chambered in 45 ATP. They do give you two 25 round mags. As you see, the thing is clear. And this thing is just, it's a pistol. It's a pistol, it's the softest shooting 45 that I think I, nah, nah, let me change that. But it's a super soft shooting 45. It does have a reciprocating barrel, kind of like the 50 BMG does have a reciprocating barrel to kind of eat up some of that recoil. Now this thing is ambidextrous almost all the way through. So 
safety selectors ambidextrous the bolt release is ambidextrous um obviously the mag release is on the bottom even the charging handle you could take this out and switch it to this side so ambidextrous so it's it's super you know left hand right hand shooter friendly but honestly i'm loving this is probably one of the best pccs out there like hands down first of all she's a 45 the only thing that'd be better is if this shot 10 millimeter if this shot 10 millimeter hands down hands down but right now she's a 45 i think this is the best pcc that you can get now the price tag that's attached to this is high up because this is modeled after the ump it is a higher price tag but i mean you kind of get what you pay for now with this one i know a lot of people was having a lot of issues so i can't really say that with this one because the people that was having issues with the groupings like it was like oh you you'll hit and your groupings will be all over the place and even using a stand i didn't really experience that but i was shooting at i think 20 yards i think we got to go further than that and it's gonna have um some issues let me know if you want me to do that video on this you know take it out like 50 yards or something and see where the groupings are hitting with this but yeah other, other than that the grip feels excellent on this it does have a folding brace because it is a pistol um it, does, it did come with backup iron sights and yeah hand stop up front super comfortable i love the way this thing feels it's just it's just a good feeling gun honestly like i'm really liking this gun so smg 45 chambered in 45 acp probably the best pcc that you can buy i'm telling you so anyways let's go on to the next one next we have another hard hitting pistol this is my ptr chambered in 308 now i know i don't shoot this one a lot I think this is like a 15 round mag or something like that like i said i know i don't shoot this a lot but 308 is expensive and having a 308 in a barrel this size is, is strictly going to be for fun but it does have a roller delayed blowback system it is modeled after the h and k 91 they had a shortened version i don't i don't want to get into that stuff but that you do get that that hk slab i mean you can't go wrong with that and this is a, a really comfortable gun to shoot it's loud you shoot 308 out of something this a barrel this short it is going to be loud let's go ahead and put that magazine in because it doesn't look right without it it is going to be loud but it's a decent shooting gun decent shooting gun i need to take this out a little bit more and kind of you know push this to its limits because i think i only shot this maybe three different range times three different range times so it is a nice looking gun. I like the way it looks. It looks super beefy. It does re resemble an HK. I mean, that's what it was meant to do. Resemble an HK. It does come with a rail on top. So I, I, I like that factor. Like, I like the factor because I don't like these iron sights that they come with. Like, I don't know why, but I don't like these iron sights. Some people do, but me, I don't like it. So, H, not HK, PTR 91, chambered in 308. Let's go on to the next one. Now, we haven't really got into any shotguns, so it's best that we start off with my favorite shotgun, which is the DT-12, chamber to 12 gauge, double barrel, 12 gauge. I think it takes 16 rounds. I think it goes either 16 or 18, I'm not sure. But each tube, you load them individually. So it has two tubes, but it only has one trigger. You load them, and with each crank, you get two shots. So it fires from the left, then it fires from the right, then you gotta rack it again. This is a heavy duty shotgun. I think this one is in Gemini Man. This one is in the Terminator movie. Um, I'm thinking there's probably another one that's in a different movie. And if y'all ain't noticed yet, a lot of guns I got here are out of movies. And so, yeah, take that how it is. I know a lot of people who's already subscribed to the channel, they already know that. But yeah, a lot of guns that I have here is out of movies. So that being said, this is a DP-12. Not too much to say about this, but this is a super tough shotgun. It, it does have a springed, butt pad in the back to you can kind of help your shoulder with that recoil of that 12 gauge but it's not too bad because this is a super heavy gun and it's built super tough so dp12 chambered in 12 gauge let's go on to the next one next we have that ts12 chambered in 12 gauge this is a different one this is like a space shooter this is like something off of star trek star wars something because this one looks weird only thing i don't like about this again with iwi they love their polymer they love i don't know why like i just feel like it's just made cheaply like i just i just get that feeling when i hold it like i wish they would have made it a little bit more solid but they're saving weight so whatever that's gonna mean but iwi chambered in 12 gauge now this one does have three rotating tubes that you also load so you pull this down pull down the charging handle you can put one up through there. Oh, and then you load it through here. 
load them through here. Then as soon as you're done, you rotate that barrel. I mean, you rotate those tubes, load the next tube, rotate the tube, load the next tube. So I think this one is five in each tube plus one in the head. So 16 rounds. And this one, this one has a little bit more kick than the IWI because obviously you got a lot of polymer, but this one is super back heavy. So it has a lot of weight in that badonka dog back there, but it's a decent gun. It's a decent gun. It just looks different. That's really why I bought it. And you can bust out five rounds of 12 gauge without having to rack, without having to reload or anything. Five rounds of 12 gauge. So in my head, it made sense. You know, my head is a good idea. So TS-12 by IWI chambered in 12 gauge. Next, next we got this. Now I know a lot of people is gonna be like, like, Opie, that's not really your style. I mean, all firearms is my style. I like all different types of firearms. This is my Spanish 10 gauge. I know a lot of people don't know about 10 gauge. If you don't know about 10 gauge, look it up. Cartridge is about that big, like it's a super big cartridge and it's super heavy headed. Now the reason why I chose to get this one, as you see, it is clear. The reason why I chose to get this one is because first of all, the barrel is like super short. So this barely reached the requirements of becoming a shotgun, but it has two triggers. It has two triggers and on Obi's channel, two triggers mean you gotta pull them at the same time. So that's exactly what we did when I took this one out. Grabbed it by the two triggers, same time. And also every time you open the gun, every time you open the gun, it's gonna put the gun on safety. So then you have to flip that safety off and then we pulled both the triggers. I mean, that's what we do on my channel. I'm not telling you what you do on your channel or your house, but on Obi's channel, we definitely pull both triggers. Oh, uh, Spanish 10 gauge. This one, I mean, it is what it is. I only took this one out, I think one time, no twice. I took this one out twice. So the ammo is kind of expensive and it's kind of hard to find. So, I mean, that's probably why I don't shoot this one a lot, but let's go on to the next one. Next, we have my Mossberg Shockwave. Good faithful, old faithful right here. This one needs to be cleaned, not cleaned internally. I clean all my farms after every range visit, so it doesn't need to be cleaned internally, but yeah, I need to wipe it down a little bit. So this is my Mossberg Shockwave chambered in 12 gauge. This one's been with me for a while. This one, been, I think this was my first 12 gauge that I bought, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. I think this was my first 12 gauge, but yeah i just like the looks of this i like the bird head grip a lot of people don't like it i don't like how smooth it is they could have put some texture on it i know a lot of people put like grip tape or skateboard tape or whatever on it me i don't i don't know it's, it's not really for me but i feel like this is a really i feel like this is a super reliable gun i mean you cannot beat a pump you cannot beat at the reliability of a pump shotgun i mean that's why with the ts12 i don't really rock with it like that because that one kind of did have a lot of issues but this one you can't beat it it's just so simple and honestly i'm surgical with this like i really get busy with this one i really like this shotgun and the shame of the 12 gauge mossberg shockwave not too much to say about this i mean i'm pretty sure everybody has seen this by now but mossberg shockwave chambered in 12 gauge oh and also this is the one that came in the emergency tube so you got that little orange tube, survival tube or whatever. Mossberg, Shockwave, Chamberlain 12 gauge. Okay, now this right here, let me go ahead and show y'all that this is clear. Nothing in here. This right here is my CZ Scorpion, Chamberlain nine millimeter. Now this is the best CZ Scorpion. Not because it's the Evo 3, what is this? Yeah, Evo 3 S1, but because it's mine. Like, because it's mine. So you have to go watch the video of this bad boy. You have to watch the video to really see what I'm talking about with this thing. This is the toughest CZ Scorpion out there. So, I mean, there's not too much I can say about it because everybody knows about the CZ Scorpion and it is in these, this nasty green. So I call it the Green Goblin, but CZ Scorpion chambered at nine millimeter. It is a really good PCC, but it's not being the SMG 45, but it's, you gotta just go watch the video. Just go watch the video and then you'll see what I'm talking about. When you see me bust this, you'll understand why this is the best CZ Scorpion out there. CZ Scorpion chambered at nine millimeter. Okay, so now we're about to get into some 357 Magnums. This right here is my COP chambered in 357 Magnum. And as y'all know, this was in a lot of movies. So I think this was in blood in blood out i think this was in this was in bad boys that's the one i remember it from bad boys the first bad boys when will smith was about to run down on the dude he pulled this out of his like ankle or something like that 
jump. Three, I'm um, four barrel, 357 Magnum. Like this thing go crazy and it's super smooth. This is a collection piece. Like this is like, you're not gonna find this. And if you do, it's gonna be way more than what I paid. I paid, I'm not gonna tell you what I paid for it, but super cheap, cheaper than a Glock. And this thing is going crazy. Like if you look this up online in the auctions, this thing is going crazy. So the way this one works, you load three, I mean four, 357 Magnums in there and you got four trigger pulls. And this trigger is the longest. I think the longest trigger that I have, look at that. But I guess because it was supposed to be a backup, so they didn't want to put a safety on it. So that trigger basically is a safety because you're not going to accidentally pull that. Look at that. Look at how long that is. And then it breaks. It literally breaks when the trigger is completely inside the gun. So like, look at how much comes out of there. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, that's so weird. Like, but it's a good gun. And it shoots pretty soft to be a 357 Magnum. So, I mean, it's a good backup gun. You could use this as a self-defense piece. But uh, I wouldn't. This is more of a collection piece to me. So, COP, shape it in 357 Magnum. Let's go on. Next, we got this Smith & Wesson. I think this is the 327. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm thinking this is the 327. But basically, it's a 357 Magnum with eight shot revolver. It's an eight shot cylinder. I mean, eight shots of 357 Magnum in this super small, this is like a 1.5 inch barrel. Like this is a soup, this is like a good, if you wanna conceal carry a revolver, this is definitely the one to do it. You get good power, you get good concealability, and this thing is super lightweight. You won't understand until you actually pick one up. This thing is super lightweight. I forgot the materials that they made this out of, but whatever material they did, it's a super lightweight gun. And this is from the Performance Center. So, you know, they really take care of their Performance Center guns. But look at that single action pull right there. It's like you just sneeze on it and that thing's going off. The double action is not, you know, not too crazy, but it's decent. You can definitely take some good follow-up shots in double action, but that single action, that's where that thing's at. That's where that thing's really gonna perform at. Crazy. So 357 Magnum, eight shots. You can't go wrong with this. This one you definitely could go wrong with. This is my Bond Arms 357 Magnum 38 Special. This thing is, uh, I cannot stand, I, I cannot hit with this, with this to save my life. I don't know how Chris was able to hit with his. He has a 45, but I was not able to hit with this. This is 357 Magnum, 38 Special, and this thing kills my hand every time I shoot. So as y'all see, as soon as I, I, as soon as I hold this thing, my hand is already hitting this. So when this thing comes back, that's all that pressure right there on that knuckle, like, this bruised my hand. I hate shooting this gun. I think this is one of the most guns I hate shooting. There's one more that we're gonna get to a little bit later, but this is one of the worst guns that I shoot. And also, the way you shoot this one is you gotta cock the hammer back, then you let it go. That's for the first barrel. Then you cock it back again, and that's for the second barrel. And then you open it, reload, do the same thing over again. It's kind of, you know, I don't know, defeats the purpose. like. You gotta have a lot of time to sit there and try to cock that back. I mean, I guess if you practice with it, you could do it pretty fast, but yeah. Bond Arms, 357 Magnum. It's a cool collection piece, not a really cool gun to carry. And I know y'all Glock boys waiting for this one, so I had to bring in a Glock. This is my Glock 29, but I got the hardest Glock. At the end of the video, it's gonna be the hardest Glock hands down. So y'all stay tuned for the end of the video, but this right here is my Glock 29. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Hands down, the best 10 millimeter Glock out right now. Like, I don't care what your argument is. I don't care if you say, oh, the Glock 20, the Glock 40, because what you can do with this one, you can have it in a small package, as you see right now, or you can put a 20 barrel in it, you can put a 40 barrel in it, and you got the same thing. You can put the same 40 mag, 20 mag, whatever, well, the 20 mag, but, or you can put the 29 mag and make it compact. So you can't make the 20 or you can't make the 40. You can't make those compact, but you can make this bigger. So that's why I feel like this is the best Glock um, 10 millimeter. So as you see, it does got a polished barrel. In case you forget, it does have that 10 millimeter in the back. And this one, I just love the way this feels in my hand. I love the way this feels in my hand. Like this, definitely a nice piece. So 10 millimeter, let's get into another 10 millimeter. Next, we got that Smith & Wesson 10 millimeter. Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter. This is the new one that came out in 2022. And me personally, I feel like this is compared to the Springfield. 
this feels way better. Like, I feel like this feels way better. I love the sights on the back of it. This one is optics ready. It does give you a semi-flat trigger. It does have a trigger safety on it, but the, the trigger pull, I think the trigger pull on the Springfield is a little bit better than this one. So, I mean, but you can't go wrong with a Smith & Wesson. They do give you two 15 round magazines. That's how it looks with those. Smith & Wesson, 10 millimeter. The best caliber, the best pistol caliber out there. Next, we got that Springfield, also a new addition to 2022. Next, we got that Springfield chambered in 10 millimeter Springfield XDM. Does come with a flat trigger. It does give you a trigger safety. Also, the trigger on this one, like I said, the trigger like on this one, I feel like it's way better than the one on the Smith. Go ahead and see that trigger pull. It's a decent trigger pull. The only thing I don't like about this is it does have a grip safety. It does have a grip safety. This one does not have a thumb safety. So you get a trigger safety. You get a grip safety, but it does come optics ready. Fiber optic front sight. I don't like the U um, rear sight. I don't. I don't like that. I don't. Know. But nothing really to say about this one. I mean, it's a decent shooter. Like honestly, I like the feel of that one better. But I feel like this one shoots better. So I, I I'll leave for me. This one shoots better for me. So Springfield XDM chambered in 10 millimeter. Let's go on to the next one. Next, we got that American Classic. Chambered in 10 millimeter, a 1911. You cannot be a 1911. I told y'all boys about them lock grips. Let me quit shining on y'all boys with them lock grips because that thing's getting bright right there. But the best purchase you're gonna have on a firearm is with them lock grips. So this is my American Classic, chambered in 10 millimeter. It does have a chrome, hard chrome finish or something like that. The trigger is all, all, it's all right for a 1911, but 1911s is already one of the best, well, the best triggers you can get in a pistol, period. So let me go ahead and show you how to take up for this one. I think it's about like a three pound trigger, three pound trigger, but it's a super nice gun. I love the feeling of this. It does have a skeletonized hammer, skeletonized trigger, just an all round good gun. I don't know why they give you a black magazine to go with this. Like it just looks completely out of place. Eight round magazine, decent 10 millimeter. Next. We got Mr. Stay Tuned. I'm telling y'all boys, stay tuned. Stay tuned, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button because 2023, I mean, we coming with it. We coming with it. So this right here is my Ivor Johnson 10 millimeter, well, chambered in 10 millimeter. This one got wooden grips. This one, it comes in case color harding. A perfect addition to anybody's collection. So y'all boys stay tuned. But anyways, this does got a um slide cuts in it and it's not just the slide cuts it does have a ported barrel let me go ahead and show y'all it does have a ported barrel to kind of keep the recoil down keep that slide down for that heavy hit in 10 millimeter and the trigger on this one it's it's a really good trigger honestly it's better than american classic but Ivor johnson is a really good brand especially for 1911s they really know what they're doing super soft shooting trigger i think that's like i don't know perfectly maybe right under three pounds but this one never been used never been fired this is this is my stay tuned special right here so this is that subscribe special right here so um Ivor johnson 10 millimeter in case color harding this is a tough one right here let's get back into something a little crazy so obviously we gotta have it ain't a party unless you bring the tommy gun to it so i mean obviously y'all know about the tommy gun y'all seen it in all kinds of crazy movies y'all seen it home alone my tommy gun dog Owners in the mask. Tommy gun. It's in all kinds of crazy old school gangster movies, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, you know, all kinds of crazy movies. The Tommy gun chambered in 45 HP, the softest shooting. So earlier while well, I was talking about with the SMG, the softest shooting, no, this right here is the softest shooting. Now, on although I haven't shot this specific one, I've shot a Tommy gun before and they shoot crazy soft. I don't know why I haven't took this one out. There's a lot of guns that I haven't taken out, but I mean, 2023, we definitely going crazy. So that being said, this is a Tommy gun chambered in 45 ACP. Not too much to say about it. Everybody should know about the Tommy gun. So Tommy gun, old school classic, old school gangster gun, chambered in 45 ACP. Let's go on to the next one. Next, we got the hardest hitting AR-15. This is my Alexander Arms chambered in 50 Beowulf. This is a 50 cal AR pistol. It is clear. Nothing in there. 
super smooth though. Safe direction, wow. But this is a really nice AR. This is a really nice AR, but it's a fun gun for me. I really don't have no reasons for an AR-15 chambered in 50 cal, you know, 50 Beowulf or whatever, but just for it to be a fun gun to shoot. So look at that enormous tank break on there. Like this thing is crazy. You gotta watch the video to really understand the sheer pressure of this thing right here. So you gotta watch the video of me shooting it. If y'all want me to take it out again, let me know in the comments. But right now, the hardest hitting AR-15, like hands down, AR-15 pistol. The hardest hitting a 50 Beowulf, a 50 cal AR pistol in this size. Alexander Arms, 50 Beowulf pistol. Up next for them Glock boys, we got that Glock 19X. This is probably the best nine millimeter Glock there is, like period. The finish on this, A1. Like no issues, like that was my main concern with this is like, after a while, like especially to throwing this around, having this around, the finish is gonna start to wear, but as you see, this thing looks flawless, it looks brand new, and I sent thousands and thousands of rounds through this thing, and it shoots like a dream. I don't know why, with the 19X, they shoot different. They shoot different than your ordinary 17 or 19 Glock. It shoots different, like honestly, I feel like this gun, it's just a really nice, like Glock did their thing with this one. They did their thing with this one. So Glock 19X, FDE, not too much I can say about this one. Everybody knows about the Glock 19X. Now keeping that FDE theme, we got a super underrated gun right here. Right here, we got the FN 503. As you see, it does have an integrated flashlight right into the frame. It does come with, what is this, an eight round magazine? Honestly, you look at this gun and you're just like, it's gonna be awkward and it's gonna not feel really good to shoot. But this gun shoots super soft and surprisingly, it's super accurate. At least when like I shot it, this gun feels good in the hand. It's super slim, but it's awkward because it's really wide. So in that being said, like a lot of people, the initial feel of it, it's not all that good. But once you take some shots with it, once you take some shots with it, you're really gonna like how this thing shoots. And it's super easy to conceal. So it's like a good backup gun. It's like a good concealed carry piece. Like when I bought this, I bought this to go along with my 509 and I really wasn't expecting nothing crazy from it. But this thing, I'm telling you, this thing right here surprised me. So FN 503, you really can't go wrong with this thing. Y'all boys check this out because this is a super underrated gun. Next, we're gonna go into some SIGs. Right now we have the SIG P365 SAS. SAS. Chambered in nine millimeter. Oh, that got oil all over it. So as you see, this was the trivia gun. This one does have the sight. So this one's a little weird. So this one, the sight is in the slide. Let me see if I can get that for y'all boys. So as you see that, uh, do you see that dot right there? There we go. The sight is right there and in, integrated into the slide. Now, initially, this is gonna be a weird gun to shoot. Like it's gonna be a weird gun because everybody's used to, you know, the traditional iron sights. Trying to shoot with this is different, but I met somebody else who says they have this and they shot it and they did all that all that stuff with it. And after they got used to it. So, I mean, anything you train with is automatically gonna be a winner. So he likes the way it shoots now. He says he's super accurate with it. He gets right on target, especially with the sights. So, I mean, me for me, I don't know, I don't really, the sights are different. The sights are different, that's kind of why I got the gun. So this is the SIG SAS. They're really trying to change the game with this one. Definitely trying to change the game with this one. And with that being said, let's go out hop into the next one, which is dubbed the Glock 43X Killer. Glock 43X Killer, y'all probably know where I'm going with this. That is the SIG Macro, chambered in nine millimeter. Oh, I don't even have the mag on me. But this mag, 17 plus one. 17 plus one rounds in this little package. Like in this little package, 17 plus one? Come on now, um, optics ready. It obviously had this comp, but the comp is built into the slide. It's not built into the barrel, the barrel's just cut short. So that's the barrel right there. And the slide comes over it and the comp is basically built into the slide. Honestly, like it does keep the gun super flat. I didn't think it was gonna work at first, but it does keep the gun super flat. The only thing I don't like about this is I don't like how mushy and plasticky this trigger feels. Listen to the way this trigger feels. It just, I don't know. But SIG people say, like people who shoot SIGs a lot, they say that's normal and there's really no issue with it, but I don't know, it's just a little different for me. So that would be my only complaint about this gun. But other than that, oh, and this gun has a super thin grip. I don't know how they get 
17 plus one. I don't know how they do it, but they did it. But for me, this grip is super thin and this gun moves around in my hand. Like my hand just completely swallows up this gun and it just moves around my hand. So I, I really don't like shooting this gun. I mean, with that being said, it does still stay flat in my hand, but it just, you know, it jumps around a little bit. I wish the grip was just a little bit bigger. But I mean, I guess you could change the back straps or whatever. So we'll try that. But Sig Macro dubbed the official Glock killer. So y'all boys gotta check this one out. Cause everybody that has a 43X or still carries a Glock after I let them shoot this, you know, they get to thinking, definitely get to thinking. So y'all boys check out the Sig X, well the Sig Macro. I'm to say X Macro, Sig Macro. Let's go on to the next one. Now hopping back into the HK platform, we got the HK MP5 chambered in 22 long rifle. Now this is one of the baddest 22s that you can buy. Honestly, I feel like this for 22s and if you wanna get it in a rifle, this is the way to go. This is hands down the way to go. So, I mean, on this one, they do give you the HK slap. The trigger on this one is really good. But like I told y'all with the PTR, I don't like these sights. Like, I don't like these sights. So I wish they would have put a rail or something up here. I know you can attach something like that, but I wish they would have put it out the gate. But super fun 22 does have collapsible stock. That makes it a really nice compact package right there. You know, nice little 22. Really gun, really good planking gun. It feels really good in the hand. I love this hand guard. I just wish it just had a little bit more muscle behind it, like a little something different. Because at the end of the day, it is a 22, so that's why you really don't see it as much on the channel because it is a 22. So it's not really that fun to shoot. So HK MP5 chambered in 22 long rifle. Maybe we'll do something with 22s down the line. So. Y'all stay tuned. Next, we got another 300 blackout. This is a PSA 300 blackout. And honestly, this one is, I don't like this gun. Like, I really don't like this gun. I have so many issues with this gun. This is what gave me a problem with um, AR-15s. I know y'all gonna say, well, it's a PSA. What do you expect? But yeah, it's a PSA. But this one is just, because I had PSA AK-47. I shot other PSA ARs and I really haven't had any issues with them. But this one, for some reason, issues. Now, it does have a really good trigger in it, and it does come with a good value, and PSA has a really good warranty. So they, the issue I was having, they fixed up immediately. But this, I mean, it's a good gun. 300 blackout, a little nice little pistol. Not too much to say about it, PSA. Winding down, y'all stay tuned for that last Glock, that official Glock. In my opinion, hands down, the best Glock. Like, hands down. So what I have here is a Dickinson. Not too much to say about this one. This one is chambered in 12 gauge, but you can't go wrong. Like I said before, you can't go wrong with a pump. You cannot go wrong with a pump. This one is like nickel plated or something. So this finish has held up. This does have one of the best filling grips out the gate, like from factory, the best filling grips and stock combo. So it does have a little something extra for your shells. Honestly, this is a super easy gun to shoot, super fun gun to shoot. And it's tampered in 12 gauge. So a lot of people should love shooting this, especially females. This is a good gun for if a female wants to shoot 12 gauge or something like that. Definitely a good one. I definitely recommend this one. Okay, so we're running out of time right now. So we are gonna kind of wrap it up. But this one right here, the worst gun period. This is a Jimenez Arms. Every time I shoot this, it, it draws blood. And I hate shooting this gun. Not too much to say about it. It does come equipped with a cheese grater in the back. Listen to it. You know get you some fresh parmesan with this thing so i mean nothing much to say about this it is chambered in 380 just have this little i don't know why because this gun was cheap that's probably why i got it but look at this little fake magazine this looks like it should take like bb guns or something chambered in 380 acp i don't know not much to say about this one and it's also a saw now the moment y'all glock boys been waiting for did i know y'all been waiting for this one so i'm gonna introduce y'all to the best glock has to offer the glock hp what? You know, I know a lot of people is going to be like, oh, Glock, Glock HP, like, what is that, new for 2022, new for 2023? I don't know. It's exclusive. But the original chambered in 45 ACP, we got the Glock oh, HP. Y'all Glock boys love y'all Glock, so here y'all go. <laughs> the best looking Glock, the best firing. This thing is super smooth. I'm talking about if people were air racking this thing, chambered in 45 ACP. Nah, let me be serious. This is my high point. Every collection has to have a high point, so don't get on my head too bad with that. But this one is chambered in 45 ACP. This one is called Big Nasty because this thing is just big, nasty, and green. It's just 
top heavy like oh like but it runs like it runs so don't don't let anybody tell you not to buy something that you can afford that's gonna run now if this thing didn't run then we'd have some issues but it runs and if you train with it you can definitely be accurate with it this has the most safeties out of any gun that i've seen it has magazine safety has a thumb safety it has the trigger if the magazine's not in just all around like it'll only give you like seven or eight rounds out the gate but as soon as you're done with that take it up super billy club so Glock HP, now let me be serious, at high point 45 ACP for some of y'all go out asking for a Glock HP, high point 45 ACP. So, I mean, that's the rundown right now. We do have a lot missing. So y'all let me know if y'all want to see a part two to this collection video. Cause I mean, I know a lot of people, especially the vets to the channel is going to notice a lot of things missing. So y'all make sure y'all hit that post notification bell. Like I told you before, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel because 2023, we definitely going crazy, especially with the giveaways. I'm telling y'all, go go check back. Go watch my previous videos and the giveaways and everything going crazy on the channel. So y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Hit that post notification bell. Leave me a comment. What I want y'all to do is I want y'all to leave a comment of y'all favorite gun in your collection. And, and we'll see how many people like that gun. We'll see who has the best gun in their collection. So leave a gun, your favorite gun in your personal collection. Leave it in the comments and let's see what people think about it. But like I said at the beginning, y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see y'all in the next video.